Here we have the Yomi Miha 360 degree 3.7K panoramic camera. Let's see what you do get in this little white presentation box. You've got the camera, which is tiny. You've got a little tripod, stroke hand grip. You've got a USB charging lead. You've got a really soft carrying case and some instructions which unfortunately appear to be in Chinese. So I may have some difficulty in actually figuring out how to use this. Anyway, quick look at the camera. It shoots genuine 360. It's got two 190 degree lenses either side so it will do true 360 scroll around panoramic video. Well the first impression is it's beautifully made feels like a metal case and very well engineered um, and it doesn't come at a cheap price tag so I would expect that really. It looks like a very vulnerable lens there so I'm glad it comes with a nice soft bag to keep it in that would be easily damaged in fact I'm wary about even taking off the protective film it uses the umbrella a12 chipset and the Sony IMX 206 which are used in the SJ7 star and the YI action camera it's got a built-in gyro which you can't appear to turn off gyro stabilization that is and it's actually an f2 lens they say which is f2 is the aperture which is wide and so should let you shoot in very low light conditions it's waterproof and dustproof to standard ip67 which means that it will tolerate a depth of one meter for up to 30 minutes that's one meter static water so there should be some potential there for shooting some good water sports video the little tabs on the bottom here support a QC2 quick charge device. Built in battery lasts 75 minutes. I'm not sure how you'd open the case if you wanted to replace the battery. No screws showing. Uh, presumably this case just pulls apart but I'm not going to try it. So what can we see here as I can't read the manual. That looks like the USB charging slot which it is and there's the card slot you've got a power on off button here you've got a Wi-Fi button you've got a record on off button and it looks like two microphone holes presumably records in stereo on this end you've got a tripod mounting screw and that just about covers it and I see there's a QR code on the box here I wonder if that gives me the option of a, an English speaking version of the app as there's no screen on it, presumably to change settings you have to use the Wi-Fi app. So that will be one of the other first jobs that I have to do. So let's get it on charge, get an SD card in. Presumably as it's 3.7K it's going to need at least a class 10 card. Right well I found a good class 10 card. This is a SanDisk and it goes in just like that. I can't say logo side towards the front because there isn't a front but that's the way round. Logo side towards the covering tag here and I must say one has to be very careful with the way you hold this so as not to get finger, finger marks on the lenses but that looks all right. Getting back to the case yeah one thing I noticed that's got a flexi spring there so you can slip it in like so and the other thing to mention is the case gets quite warm. It's used as a heat sink for the processor because there is a lot of processing power goes on with 360 cameras. Right, I'll get it on charge. Try and install the app or try and find an English version of the app and then we'll see what happens next. Well, I've got the camera plugged in and as you can see there's a little red light there with a battery icon on the front here or on the back whichever way you decide to look at it which obviously shows that it's charging
Well, I'm pleased to say the app installed OK using the QR code on the Chinese instructions. And it appears to be in English. Go. And as I say, there's a Wi-Fi button on the camera, so presumably press and hold. Turn the camera on. Oh, this is easy. Turn the camera on, press the power button to turn your camera on. Yes. How to install the SD card. Open the SD card slot. Insert the card properly. Disable the SD slot. In other words, put the cover on. Turn the camera on. I think I might do it now, even though it's probably not fully charged. So that's the power button. Made a little beep noise and we've got a couple of little icons there. One showed camera, one showed video camera. Turn the camera on. Turn on the Wi-Fi. Little beep. We've got a blue light flashing there which shows the Wi-Fi's on. I must say this this is pretty straightforward. Pair, tap the connect button to start pairing. Ah, connect. That will be on the app. Complete the thingy. Got it. Okay. Got it. Oh, it's a very good app actually. Talks you right through it. Tap the camera to connect. Turn the Wi-Fi on, turned on. Select Wi-Fi network, right, connect to the network. Password is 12345678. Let's go into settings. That's the one, MJ thingy. 12345678. Connect. That was pretty painless. You can see that. I can see now why the illustration shows it stood on this all the time because otherwise you're laying it down on a lens. I'm going to put it on the tripod to keep it safe. I'll have another go. Oh. Oh. Authentication problem it says. Connect to the network. Connected no internet. Yes that worked that time. Maybe I put the password in wrong. So let's see here. Right, so I'm now connected to the app. MI Sphere, that's the one. And that's the. Make sure the Wi Fi is turned on. Turned on. Connect to the network. Your SD card isn't compatible. Ah. Okay. Slide the screen to get the panoramic view. Got it. Right, well that wasn't exactly painless, but I got there in the end. Got it. Well, what do you know? It says my card isn't compatible. But here we have the camera actually working. And I could record, no doubt, in 360. Look at that, and you see how untidy my house is. So let's see. Oh, my card isn't compatible. Okay, I'm a, I've got another card that's in my other Yomi YI2. I'll pop that in. Obviously, card is important. I thought that was a class 10, maybe it wasn't. Watch this space. Right, well, I found another card. This is a 64 gig SanDisk Extreme, which works fine at 4K in the other Yomi camera that I've got the YI2. So, should be okay in this. Yomi Sphere, as they call it. Okay, so I've had this for a few days now, and I've been using it. So, just to recap the operation of it, in case you missed it in that mumble jumbled beginning. First off, always good to keep it on this little tripod, because if you lay it down, you're in danger of damaging the lens, which obviously protrudes quite a lot on both sides. Operation of it, press the power button to turn it on, two icons camera and video camera starts in whatever you had it in last time which obviously was camera in my case short press you're in video camera short press you're back in camera mode and of course if you press the shutter release you take a still short press again 
If I press the button, I am taking video. Obviously I can't see what I'm taking, but it's a 360 degree panoramic camera, so basically you're taking everything everywhere. Another press, and it stops it. So if you want to use the Wi-Fi app, you've got Wi-Fi button here. Short press of that, you can see the lights flashing, it's waiting for a Wi-Fi connection. Now bear in mind this is a pretty rubbish old phone, very cheap Motorola Moto G 2nd Gen. Turn your Wi-Fi on and up comes MJXJ, no internet access, except no internet and so on. Connect, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, I've already done that. Connected, no internet. If you want to look at any images on this, you have to connect the app. Or you can connect to your computer, plug in the USB. But if you want to convert them into proper 360s, you do need to use the app. And that's where I've encountered a few problems. Probably because my phone's not powerful enough. Connect here to the app. Connect again. You'll get there in the end. That's better. And as you can see, I'm connected here with a 360 degree image. There's the camera. Now as far as these settings go, this little button here enables you to limit the length of your videos. And I can see now why they do this, because the processing power required by a phone is quite considerable. So you you can either set it to 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 30 seconds. I've got it on 10 seconds. This one here, I think is camera power off time. If I come back to settings, resolution wise, you've got a choice of 3456 by 1728, which must be what they call 3.7K. You've got 2304 by 30 frames a second, 2304 by 1152 by 60 frames a second. And of course, apart from the video resolution settings, you've got white balance, exposure compensation, recording cycle, and so on. Back to the image display screen. If you press this, you change from video mode to stills mode. Press that, you've taken a still. But here is the important bit. There's a little image there which shows the last image I've just taken. And as you can see, there's a, it shows a few images. I've just been at a paragliding festival, paramotoring festival, and it's got some images there. In fact, I can show you, the only way you can look at these images is by looking on your phone or tablet, providing you've got a powerful enough phone or tablet, which I haven't. So this was a still taking at this paramotoring festival. You can't see much happening there, but there are people looking at people. Um, and of course it is 360, totally 360, spherical. If I go back to camera, you'll notice it's got on the top here, camera and local. If I do local, those are the images that I've actually transferred from the camera to my phone. The way you do that is, still I just took a tiny little arrow there, press that, it's now downloaded to my phone. So if I press local, it's now transferred to the memory card on my phone. Likewise with these videos that I took at the um, paragliding festival, Unfortunately, they won't play on my phone. Obviously it hasn't got enough processing power. All I get is blank screen. But just here, you'll see it says more. If you press more, it's got a couple of other things that you can do. Take a screenshot, export to phone. If you want to actually post this on YouTube, you've got to do export to phone. And then you've got to add some metadata so that YouTube knows that it's a 360 video. As you can see, or as you maybe saw, when I try and use my phone to process it, it just crashes at 0%. Export to phone is a very important step in the process of converting the spherical video into a format that can be used on YouTube, as I said, with the addition of some metadata. If you just download the video in its raw form from the SD card straight to your computer by plugging in the micro USB. This is the kind of image you get. If you add metadata to this and upload it to YouTube, you get a kind of scroll around 
video but it's in two spheres as you can see in this clip that's on YouTube. As you can't make a video that mixes spherical with normal projection, the only way I can show you is by pointing the video camera at my computer screen and playing it on YouTube and as you can see it scroll around but in two spheres. If export to phone had worked it would just be in one image that you could scroll the whole thing and it will be a normal YouTube rectangular image not two spheres. I have had some success posting still images. I'll put a link below to where you can download some free software to put the metadata in for YouTube use. As far as stills go I have managed to capture some good 360 stills. That's me pointing at my phone rather while taking a still. So an interesting bit of kit. There is some potential for some very creative work there as long as you've got a phone that's powerful enough to deal with the images or video it produces. So I think probably the app needs updating or maybe my phone needs updating but some potential there for some really interesting video making. But for now that's it. So thanks for watching and hope you find this valuable.